Welcome back to Preparing for the Unexpected. Today we are talking with Dotan Sagi. Dotan, great uh, first and second segment. Now I'd like to ask you, how do we go about helping people that maybe uh, when they started off weren't making the right decisions or were nervous to make decisions? You know, you talked about influencers in the previous segment. How do we go about changing that behavior? Are, are there tools that we can uh, leverage to make people better decision makers? Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? So I have two answers for that. One is, yes, there are many tools, but I'll ask you a question back, Alex. Mm -hmm. Why change their behaviors? Maybe the procedure needs to change. Maybe the process needs to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I say a lot of times, people are people and, and they have their own personalities. Yes, there is a degree of change that has to happen. You go into training, you train someone, you mentor them, they will change according to the values of the organization that are exhibited in that protocol. But there are also, you know, human traits that may be, that may not change. And, and in a, in on day to day, you can train them, but in a crisis, they may come out. Maybe in certain cases, protocols have to change. And I can give you an example uh, of a municipality, a municipality that prepares for X amount of events. And um, uh, that the the protocols say that when that happens, there's a command control center within the municipality. Let's say a gas explosion and the building collapses uh, and everyone runs to that command and control center and, you know, they immediately start working and there's uh, the phone and everything starts working according to protocol. And when people join the municipality, they're trained as such. And the training is fantastic. People run to the room, they open the computers and the telephones and they start answering the citizens of the municipality and the mayor will come down and do the work and, you know, everything works fantastically and according to procedure. But then when you do a tabletop slash war game, you found out that the mayor, even though the protocols say he should be in the command control center, always goes to the site of the collapse. Now, there's a question here, which is very interesting, because managing it from there and managing it from the command control center is something totally different. Communication style, the words, the noise. There are many, many different um, things that can change now. So... My question is, do you change the mayor's uh, behavior and tell him, hey, the protocol that was written by the government consultant, doesn't matter who, says you have to do X? Or do you say, you know, this is a political figure, and to be very frank, he probably will not change his behavior, and he will be going to there. So my question is, if everyone knows in the simulations that he's behaving in a certain way, and every five years, there is an election or six years or 10 years, depending where we live and where it is. Why are we training people on the protocol that we know is not going to happen in real life? Mm -hmm. Why not change the protocol because of the behavior of certain decision makers? And I'm not saying that every decision making, I know a lot of people are going to get uh, uh, riled up about this. I'm not saying change your protocol because everyone has a different behavior, but in certain cases, in certain events for certain uh, stakeholders, don't focus on changing the behavior. Maybe they can give a good solution and the KPIs can be achieved working in a different way. Now let's train the rest of the municipality on what's really going to happen and not what's written on a piece of paper. Because when the first building collapses, they're all gonna think that they're running to the mayor underground or in the command control center and he's not gonna be there. He's going to be on a phone somewhere, I don't know, a kilometer from there, trying to, uh, you know, manage it and maybe get a nice picture or whatever um, mm -hmm. uh, they do on site. So, yes, behaviors can be changed through training, through mentoring, through understanding. If you understand how and what you have done has uh, affected the end result, that's fantastic, which is why I say don't do a tabletop in a room with a PowerPoint because no one will understand how the decisions and the behaviors affect. But if I use the wrong words and you don't answer me now for 20 minutes because you're insulted, even in the middle of a crisis, I should learn from that. I should be able to change my behavior because I understand how it affected the KPI, the end result, and so on and so forth. But I'm also saying some behaviors don't need to be changed. The protocol needs to be changed. The protocol is just, don't kill me, is a piece of paper that is supposed to help us get to the best result we have. So base it on people's behavior because 
people are going to make decisions. What What about because now you got me thinking? Because I, I completely agree with you. You know, sometimes the procedures that are written are like this would never happen. <laughs> Nobody's ever going to do this, no matter what it says. But because audit or uh, a, a, a compliance report or something like that came along and said thou must have it kind of gets people stuck because it's like, well, no, we would never do that, but you have to have it anyway. And Which then is... you, you kind of end up with this, like we mentioned earlier on another segment of people ignoring the plans, you know, uh, they're not going to pay attention to it. And now you kind of in a position where you have a plan that you know is not going to work anyway. So how do you deal with that? I agree. And when people don't believe in the plan, then 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 anything can happen. They have to believe in what they're doing, which is why I've always told when auditors or regulators, what are the KPIs? What within this long process has to happen? If the mayor is at the building, as long as we achieve the KPI of declaring the crisis, alerting, doing certain things, and he's able to do it, then why not? Why not? Allow additional branches within this process. Now, if a different mayor comes in, maybe those branches become obsolete. Mm -hmm. Maybe they won't be used. Maybe we can go back to the mayor and tell him, listen, when you use this branch of going to the site, certain KPIs may be achieved a little later. And that comes in when you start learning, AI starts learning how those decisions are made and where those KPIs are achieved. And then we can say, hey, when you go to the site, this is what happens. These KPIs are not achieved on time or not fully, and it affects the end result. By the way, maybe the decision will be, okay, I can live with that. We as an organization can live with that because it serves other purposes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, well, that, I, I truly mentioned... believe in that. Oh, go ahead. No, I truly believe in that. So you mentioned AI, and that was actually going to be my next question. Can we leverage AI to help people make decisions, achieve the KPIs, or is it something that we're not quite there yet? You know, how, how can we leverage it? So first of all, AI is the big buzzword now, right? Everyone's yeah. using AI. <laughs> so I'm going to drill it down to machine learning. I can teach the engine to learn how certain people are making their decisions and achieving their KPIs. I can learn that Alex works better uh, when X, Y, Z happens. And I can learn that certain roles in certain circumstances and the more the machine learns, the more it can predict how we will be able to achieve future KPIs. The end of the day, the exercise, the tabletop, the war game is not just to have a war game. It's to see what is it? The, the purpose is there is to enable us to manage our crisis better, right? That's the end that's the end game here. So whatever tools I have that help me, uh, that enable me to do that, the more I can gain knowledge of how people are managing crisis all over the world and see how it can affect me and learn how they do it and how different events can, can change decisions, the better off we are. And that's where the machine learning comes. The ability to understand and learn, hey, we achieved X percent of our KPIs. When we look at it, the reason is that our decision makers have a problem with situational awareness. And those are the KPIs that led it to us. So now, in order to enable the organization to be better prepared, let's focus on training, mentorship, whatever, on situational awareness or knowledge of the procedure or, or not knowing better uh, always and certain and many other different things. The machine can learn and it can assist us. I don't think at this time it can replace our decision-making processes, but it can support us. It can help us and say, hey, there's still six KPIs left. If you continue like that, you've veered off the path. It's going to be very difficult to get back. I will say this, and I know we're getting to the end of our segment today. I will say this, the more the system is able to learn how others have brought it back when it veered off, it can offer you solutions. It can tell you that in 90% of other events that have happened, if you do ABC, you may be able to get back to your path. And that's a support tool that you may decide to or not decide to uh, or decide not to do 
uh, as you progress. So really, AI can help us with decision making, help us guide us along. But and I know some people out there think this AI is not there to manage the crisis for us. I don't think that on a strategic level today, it can yet manage. It will one day. It may one day. Depends how we teach it and what we teach it, by the way. Uh, and today we have generative AI that is able to generate data and information. And that's also a crucial part. Will it replace? I don't think it will replace fully. Will it be a support tool for every CEO that has this you know, AI assistant that he presses a button and the assistant tells him, hey, this is the status. This is what happening. These are the KPIs. This is how they've been achieved. And this is how with different people, you may veer back to your path. That's can, the future. I, I guess it could give um, some direction that maybe people in the, uh, let's, let's assume everyone's in the command center. People in the command center are talking, coming up with ideas. AI could generate something that they hadn't thought of to help going, we hadn't thought of that. We could have really been in trouble had we gone on, on this path. It's so maybe, maybe say, hey, you know, did you consider this? It can. The the future can have that. But at the end of the day, someone will have to make a decision. Someone will have to make a decision. And I don't see in the near future uh it being put in the hands of uh AI. AI is a tool that helps us make those decisions. And what don't get all those AI programmers angry at me now. Even my <laughs> in my company, I know they're going to call me after this and and say, "Hey, Dotan, why are you saying what you're saying?" Well, they can send me emails if they want. That's that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we only have three minutes left, believe it or not. Do you have any final thoughts on war games and decision making and some of the things that you've seen over the years? You know, and any anything final to share? You know, I've seen many people that think they know how they're going to behave in a crisis because when they plan it and, and they may be, you know, the best decision makers in routine. But crisis has a very specific uh, characteristics. Everything's unexpected. The level of pressure is huge. Uh, the consequences of your decisions can be critical, both in financial and in human life. And if you don't practice, if you don't understand what it means, those decisions that you make and how they affect others, you will be surprised in the crisis. So whatever you do, in whatever manner, practice and prepare. Because today, crisis is just, you know, from natural hazards to cyber to active shooter, workplace, everything, everything is chaotic around us. And I'm not even talking about uh, COVID epidemics and uh, pandemics and so on and so forth. We are in a world, a VUCA world. Mm -hmm. Prepare. Think about the scenarios. You have a risk matrix. It's not just there to say I have a risk matrix for compliance. If that's the risk that pull, that those are the risks your organization, check them out. See how you would react if those materialize. Yeah, it, it's the world is forever changing, so we have to as well. You know, exactly. And as you've pointed out numerous times, so too are the procedures. You know, exactly. I, I've I've mentioned on the show before that I'm not a big believer in hitting the delete key all the time, because as things change, something that you may have deleted <laughs> last month in an update is applicable now, but it's no longer in your procedure, so you've forgotten about it, and now you've lo lost an opportunity. I agree. Yeah. That's why I think procedures are like DNA, like a living entity that's turning all around with mm -hmm. different paths to achieving those KPIs. So a path that may not be applicable applicable today may be applicable in another scenario, in a different situation. The more it's digital, the more it exists there, not on paper, you have all those paths with you. And the AI can help you examine them. Yeah, so That rounds everything up for us. Dotan, thank you so much for sharing all your uh, knowledge and expertise with us today. I really appreciate it. I, I love the idea of war games and really putting people to the test. And as uh, one guest said, you know, making them cry. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, really putting them to the test. You know, it, it's one thing to sit there, like you said, and say, yeah, this is what I would do. And it's another to really be faced with that situation, you know. Would you really do what you think you're going to do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, you know, thank you very much, Alex, for having me. It was, I enjoyed myself. So for all of those out there, reach out to Alex so you can continue with the
Yep, just they, like I did, by the way. Yeah, yes, yes, you can reach out just like Doton did, and here he is. So, so thank you so much for joining, Doton. I really appreciate it. Uh, I had a great chat here, and uh, I'm sure we'll probably run into you and chat again. Uh, I hope in the future, anyway. So, thank you very much, and keep safe. You too, and everyone watching and listening, stay prepared, everybody. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, stay prepared, everybody.